And he said, and some of them I can't stand. Some of them think they are white. He said, but you know what the job of a revolutionary is? To love all of them. Because you never know when you're going to need them. So how did you connect with Rap Brown? I have never met a more courageous, more compassionate, more fearless warrior in my life than Rap Brown. He was literally afraid of nothing. Rap Brown was the man that I wanted to be. He was the hunter that I wanted to be. He was the spirit head of a clan. Um, he was wise. And he loved black people. The love that he had exuded from him. It wasn't something he talked about. It's something he lived. He became Muslim way after I met him. But I saw in him a leader for the new America. A leader for black people who was fearless. He had joined the Black Panther Party and then he started his own group and he started cells and he started, he became a Muslim. I was with him for a long time. And, and how did you meet? He what would come the... to the political workshop. Oh, okay. So you knew and who he was. I knew who he, he was. And he was coming to And he check would sit in the second row, put his feet up. He had a huge fro. He always wore sunglasses. And he would make the, not snide remarks, they were the most hilarious remarks that would have the class cracking up. I couldn't stop him. And he didn't contradict me. He would just question. And remember, the sign of a good mind is not the answer, it's the question. One day a Puerto Rican came in and started discussing or uh, protesting the fact that we were defining ourselves as black. And Rap in his Louisiana draw said, brother, let me, let me explain something to you. If you in Louisiana and you try that stuff, you get killed just as soon as a black man. You are nothing but a Spanish nigga. And the guy was in shock. I almost fell on the floor laughing because I already knew what the deal was. He, he didn't humiliate him. Rap refused to humiliate people. He felt that that was actually moving them away from revolution. But he said, come on, man, we all in this together. It doesn't matter what kind of nigga you are. You could be Spanish speaking nigga, French speaking nigga, Papamiento speaking nigga, <laughs> Portuguese speaking nigga. Ibonic speaking there, but you black. I developed a love for him, and we would hang for hours. We would walk the streets of Harlem. The hustlers loved him. The prostitutes loved him. The dope dealers loved him. The basketball players loved him. He would go play basketball. on. He was on 135th and He was a good player. And just as vicious, because under the boards in Harlem, you can get your eye taken out or your teeth, you know. Knocked you, out. Yeah, yeah, knocked out. But he was good. He was a great football player, too. Quite an athlete. He was a great shot. They say he shot a policeman dead in Atlanta. I think they, they played this game very well. Uh, I don't know if he was hiding somebody and they wanted to get him. But they came to get him for the most ridiculous reasons. Uh, false impersonation and a, uh, a badge. He was impersonating an officer. They wanted him dead. And the reason they wanted him dead is because he hit, was controlling a piece of Atlanta that the real estate developers wanted. And they couldn't sell drugs wherever he was. He had turned Muslim already. And when you went into his enclave in that particular part of Atlanta, the peace that you felt, you knew you were safe. I would salat with him. I'm positive he had, if he had stayed out of jail, I probably would have converted to Islam. He was that powerful with me and to me. As it turns out, we ended up becoming great friends. I met his family. I met his in, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Interesting story about that. I had um, some problems with uh, the Lords right before Rap and I became very close. And right before the, I joined the Lords uh, or the Sociedad del Bizu Campos, I wasn't sure that I wanted to be part of them, but Rap told me that if they were coming to me, it was God's way of telling me I had to organize the Puerto Rican community. I said, Rap, they're not ready. And he said, it doesn't matter. Your job is to get them ready. I was just aghast at it. I wanted to stay in the black community uh, doing what I thought was necessary, including armed struggle. And so Cain dispelled me of that, of that myth. He grabbed me one day by the neck and said, what color are you? I said, I'm black. He said, no, what color are you, literally? And I was kind of taken aback by his bluntness, by his fury. And so he grabbed me by the neck and threw me against the wall. He said, I want you to describe exactly what color you are. And I said, I'm brown. He said, isn't that cute, you're brown. What kind of brown? I said, well, cafe au lait. He said, well, that's even cuter. <laughs> that's even cuter. And he said, I'm black. I'm the kind of black that white folks are scared of. I'm the kind of black who also speaks back, who's bright who they are terrified of. He said, you better understand who you are. You are Puerto Rican, and what you need to do is go back to your community and deal with the contradictions therein. It's not that we don't need you, we love you, but your job is done here. I was so upset that I, I, I burst out crying, and I went to Rap's house. And Rap said, I'll tell you what, he, 
grab my shoulders. He said, it's okay, baby boy. He used to call me baby boy. He said, let's take a walk. We took a walk. He said, I'm going to Baton Rouge soon. I want you to come with me. I said, fine. I didn't even tell the last pause. I just went with him to Louisiana. I met his mom. I met his brother, Ed. And while we were there, we went to a football game. And I, I saw blacks and whites getting along very well. They were cheering. They were slapping five. But it's, the camaraderie was incredible. I said, "Isn't this must be the new America route. And he looked at me strangely. He said, what are you talking about? I said, look at blacks and whites loving each other here. He said, nigga, you must be out your mind. He said, these are, these are all black people in here. I said, what? He said, they're all black people. We've got mulattoes. We've got quadroons. We've got octoroons. These, these are not white people. Every white person in Baton Rouge knows who these people are and in New Orleans. And he said, and some of them I can't stand. Some of them think they are white. He said, but you know what the job of a revolutionary is? To love all of them. Because you never know when you're going to need them. When you're talking about who's black and who's not, what Cain was telling you was to go into a community and organize. Don't get caught up in who's more militant than who. Work at organizing the, the community. Because Felipe, everybody has their role. Play yours. So I came back, he drove me back to East Harlem, and I'll never forget it, he put me right in front of the office, I hugged him, he said, good luck bro, and that was it.